don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Robin Williams impressions. This is Elmer Fudd. Sing Bruce Springsteen. Why, Julia, child! And I realize that would scare even a hyperactive child. Not so funny when it's your mother, is it? For this list, we're looking at some of this comedic legend's most memorable moments of mimicry throughout his career. This includes performances on various talk shows, bits from his stand-up specials, or major motion picture roles. So be sure to let us know in the comments which Robin Williams impression puts a smile on your face. All right, let's get into it. Number 10. Golf and the Scottish – Robin Williams Live on Broadway Who else could lament our lack of understanding of the Scottish accent while simultaneously reenacting the invention of golf in all its absurdities? Here's my idea for a sport. I knock a ball in a gopher hole. Known for poking fun at many different cultures, Williams seemed to have an affinity for parodying the Scots. A whack a ball that goes in a gopher hole. Oh, you mean like croquet? From Mrs. Doubtfire's beloved Glaswegian-esque accent to this featured bit from his 2002 one-man show Live on Broadway, there's no denying it all came from a place of love. Quacking away and each time you miss you feel like you're gonna have a stroke! Sources state that Robin had genuinely developed an affection towards Scotland after first visiting in the 1970s, cultivating great respect for the people and culture. I will be there trashing your ass, jerking away in the sun! <laughs> Number 9. Julia Child to Margaret Thatcher, Des O'Connor Tonight. And combined them and got this gentle, gentle voice of Mrs. Doubtfire who can still say, Get away! Fleshing out a character takes months of research and various attempts at voice and mannerisms. For Robin, it was initially playing around with the distinctive accents of two of the world's most influential and imposing women that helped him eventually settle on the sweet yet commanding Scottish speech of Mrs. Doubtfire. I first started doing uh, the voice was very much like that! <laughs> like Julia Child! And I realized that would scare even a hyperactive child. During a guest spot on the British variety show Des O'Connor Tonight, Williams explained how he first started with a voice similar to Julia Child, before bringing the intensity down to what he called Margaret Thatcher on steroids. So I had to kind of tune it down and I got more like Margaret Thatcher on steroids and it went down. <laughs> if these imitations aren't enough to get a chuckle out of you, our next entry definitely will. Number 8. Barbara Streisand, Mrs. Doubtfire. Could you make me a woman? Honey, I'm so happy! This isn't the first, and it definitely won't be the last time we mention this beloved 1993 family classic for this list. I do a great impression of a hot dog. Although the film is chock full of amazing scenes showcasing the lead's talent for voices, it is a specific moment during a makeover montage that is truly gut-busting. When Father Daniel Hillard plans to pose as a nanny to spend time with his children, he seeks the help of his makeup artist brother to turn him into a woman. I feel like Gloria Swanson. You look like a mother. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. Cue the campy nails, a latex-nosed bubby, and a shockingly accurate-looking Barbara Streisand. Not only is this one of the funniest things you will ever see, it only gets better when he starts breaking out in a rendition of her hit Don't Rain On My Parade. Don't tell me not to live, just sit and putter. Life's candy and the sun's a ball of butter. Don't bring around a cloud to rain on my parade. Number 7. Hollywood Director. Whose line is it anyway? It comes as no surprise that a show entirely dedicated to improvisation would be right up the comedian's alley. I'd like to welcome a special guest, Ro Robin Williams. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Welcome to the show. It's nice thank to you. Have you. Thank you, dude. It's nice to be here. Williams' lightning speed, quick witted, off the cuff comedic style served him well during an appearance on Whose Line Is It Anyway? One of the standout moments would arguably be during the show's recurring game Hollywood Director, where the cast is given a film scene to play out while continuously changing their performance style according to the director's suggestions. Cut, 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 cut! I'm really having a hard time staying in character. I know you are! Not only are Robin's impressions of Italian and river dancing chefs hysterical, it also gives audiences a chance to see him play off of others for a change and share the spotlight. Try to concentrate and work hard! Oh, Please. fine. Work hard. Please. Work hard. All right. You know what? Last night you didn't say that. <laughs> Number 6. Heads up. 
The Ellen DeGeneres Show. For me, the non certain shows is French. Out of all the games on this popular talk show, the producers managed to find one that was clearly tailor made for this accent impresario. Basically, a souped up version of charades. The object of Heads Up is to guess the word on the hidden screen while a partner is either voicing or acting it out. And surprise, surprise, Robin pulled it off mostly without a hitch. From his spot on French accent to a pretty decent chair to probably one of the best Miley Cyrus imitations ever, it seemed like there was nobody he couldn't recreate. All half breed. Uh, Cher? Yeah! Uh. The only snag came with his attempt at Rosie Perez's accent, which just goes to show that even the greats have off days too. Tell me right now, I want to do my quick. I'm gonna, before I bring out Dudia Roberts. Uh, uh. Uh, Alan Fudd? <laughs> <laughs> Number 5. Jack Nicholson, The Graham Norton Show According to a 2013 Reddit AMA, it was revealed that out of Robin's vast arsenal of celebrity impersonations, his absolute favorite to perform was that of good friend Jack Nicholson. All right, Sparky, here's the deal. If you want to court the little lady, you gotta be a straight shooter, do you got it? This comes as no surprise, with Williams not only nailing the legendary actor's voice, but his distinctive facial mannerisms as well. I have to go outside for a little medication. When fellow guest star Elijah Wood offered up an anecdote about Jack during an episode of The Graham Norton Show, the funny man immediately started shifting into his famous impression, and ended the bit with a zany story of his own regarding the three-time Oscar winner. We're standing backstage because they're just about to take you to the press conference, and he goes, You know, Robbo, now I have one for every decade. <laughs> <laughs> Number 4. French Siri, The Ellen DeGeneres Show Remember when Siri was the height of smartphone technology? It wasn't that long ago. And that's exactly what was on the famous San Franciscan's mind when he sat down with Ellen in 2011. I tried to use it in France, and it was like, Siri, name me a fine French restaurant. Robin, I can't find restaurants in France. So at that point, I give up, okay. After discussing the newest feature on the Apple iPhone 4S, Williams decided to answer his own question by acting out what he thought a French Siri would sound like. I wish it had a French accent and called it Siri. What do you do? What do you care? I don't know. Apparently, Siri, as he called it, would sound pretty much like his standard French impression, complete with snarky, condescending remarks, disdain for the American user, and being just generally unhelpful. You're in France. Walk outside. Walk down a block. Look around, you idiot. Sacre bleu. Live your life! <laughs> Taking pictures with your phone. Look, look, and then paint. Number three, all the voices. Mrs. Doubtfire. I do voices. What do you mean you do voices? Well, I do voices. Most of us have probably wondered at one time or another what it would have been like to catch a glimpse inside the mind of Robin Williams. Yeah! We've come to this planet looking for intelligent life. Oops, we made a mistake. We're happy to be in America. Don't ask for a green card. Well, we think it would look a little something like this iconic scene from Mrs. Doubtfire, when William's Daniel Hillard shows off his voice acting skills to social worker Mrs. Selner. I want you in the worst way. Well, this is certainly a rough meeting, and it's not going very well for me, I'll tell you that. Hey, boss, give it a change. She's gonna loosen up any moment. The audience is treated to a lightning round of impressions, including aliens, a silly 007 Sean Connery. Look at me right now, money penny. I want to undo that bow and get to know you. A charmingly threatening Humphrey Bogart. Don't make me smack you, sweetheart. I'll do it. And possibly the most amazing of all, an imitation of a hot dog. I do a great impression of a hot dog. Although the social worker looks less than amused in the end, we suspect that even she probably got a secret chuckle out of that. Mr. Hillard, do you consider yourself humorous? I used to. There was a time when I found myself funny. But today, you have proven me wrong. Number two, Elmer Fudd, An Evening with Robin Williams. This is Elmer Fudd, Sting Bruce Springsteen. It takes a special kind of person to combine two seemingly separate and opposite entities and bring them together to create something pretty darn awesome. I'm driving in my car. <laughs> That is exactly what you can find in the 1983 comedy special An Evening with Robin Williams, in the form of Elmer Fudd serenading the audience with Bruce Springsteen's Fire. I pull you a little closer. You say no. This performance really got the audience and us all fired up. Not only is it a perfectly skillful display of mimicry on Williams' part, but it's also a testament to the artist's creativity and pure fun. But when we get, oh, it's like fire. 
I don't know about you, but that Elmer Fudd one is super memorable for me. In fact, you might say it's fire. <laughs> But I guarantee you will agree with our number one pick. So let's look through some hysterical honorable mentions and then we will name our top Robin Williams impressions. News anchor Walter Cronkite, Robin Williams, weapons of self-destruction. The father goes, oh my God. And little Timmy says, not so funny when it's your mother, is it? The French, again. Robin Williams live on Broadway. Well, and every year the French go, he's on chemicals. I'm going, it's chemotherapy, you little toad sucker. <laughs> okay, he has one testicle, he's aerodynamic. <laughs> Everybody cut off your balls, you'll be quicker, I'll do it. Arnold Schwarzenegger, the 62nd Golden Globe Awards. A governor in California who talks like this. A man who said, well, go to California. A true American. Christopher Walken. Robin Williams' Weapons of Self-Destruction. There's one guy who could do porn and I think we all would watch. That guy is Chris Walken. Oh God, yes. Oh my God, he would be amazing. Chris would be up there going, I'm inside you. Ronald Reagan, Saturday Night Live. In the middle of his speech, he got into nuclear weapons, started talking about, well, nuclear weapons are basically where people have an image of, it's about a man while well, you're pushing a button and a lot of places blow up. <laughs> If my son said that, I'd keep him back a year in school, you know what I'm saying? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Genie's Celebrity Impressions – Aladdin the ever impressive. If re-watching this doesn't take you back to a happy place, we feel very sorry for your inner child. Right here for your very much wish fulfillment. Thank you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Arguably one of his most beloved characters ever, Robin's scene-stealing performance as Genie was just another excuse for him to flex his improvisational chops and show off his numerous celebrity and pop culture impressions. Uh, almost. There are a few uh, provisos, a, a couple of quid pro quo. <laughs> Though many of us didn't know at the time who William F. Buckley, Rodney Dangerfield, or even Robert De Niro were, his funny voices, sharp dialogue, and effervescent presence were enough to make Genie's crazy characters an unforgettable part of our childhood. Excuse me? Are you looking at me? Did you rub my lamp? Did you wake me up? Did you bring me here? And all of a sudden you're walking out on me? I don't think so. The Genie might be my favorite Disney character, bar none. So what about you? What's your favorite Robin Williams impression? Or which one do you think is his best? Be sure to let us know in the comments if you think we missed anything, and we definitely did. Or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya.